Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're back with our Synology NAS because we're wrapping up our paid sponsorship from Synology on their new DSM 6.0 operating system and some of its new features. Uh, they asked me to do a couple of videos talking about uh, some of the things that have changed with their new operating system and we looked uh, prior at Video Station as well as some of their productivity features and today we're going to talk about backing up because backups are a really critical component for anything you might do on your network, especially when you've got so much important stuff uh, residing in a single device. It's very important to get the data off of this drive and into some place safe. Now, one of the things that you can easily do is just plug in an external hard drive into the back or front of your device to one of its USB ports. We got two of them on this one, uh, and that would easily back the data up, and then you could take the drive off-site and store it someplace and kind of swap drives around or whatever. And that can work if you've got the ability and, and the wherewithal to keep that habit up of continually backing up, moving drives off-site, and swapping them back and forth. But if you want to do something simpler, uh, you can just get another Synology NAS device. It could even be a lower-end device and basically do a backup over your local network to start and then after that initial data load is done take that second device off-site and then do incremental backups on a regular basis so you don't really need to think about it it'll just do it on a scheduled basis for you and that might be a much better way to do an off-site backup uh, safely and securely in fact you can even encrypt the outgoing connection so uh, nobody can pick up your data while it's in transit so I'm going to show you how that works in this video we're going to start with a uh, initial load of data take that drive off-site and then do an incremental backup so you can see how it all works and this will be done uh, with Synology's new hyper backup feature in their DSM 6.0 operating system so let's take a look and see how off-site backups work all right so I'm on the web-based control panel of our uh, main Synology drive this one right here so this one has all the data that I want to keep safe so everything that I'm using for my home office activities right now are being saved on this device and I want to back this up to another one so on this device, what you need to do is install uh, their Hyper Backup software from their package center, which is right here uh, in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, you'll get to this through their web-based control panel. You want to go over to Backup and then look for Hyper Backup and install it. So you'll see a little install icon underneath this Hyper Backup here. You click on that, and once it's installed, you'll have the option to open it. We're also going to look at the Hyper Backup Vault that we're going to install on the other Synology drive that we're backing up to, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now, once Hyper Backup is installed, you will get a new icon uh, in your application tray here, and what we're gonna look for is Hyper Backup, which is right up here at the top, and I'm gonna click on that, and it'll load up our Hyper Backup application. Now, right now, I don't have any backups set up yet, so it's asking me the kind of backup I want to create. So if you just wanted to do the USB backup to an external hard drive, you would do local shared folder and external storage option. Uh, but in this case, because we're going remotely to another Synology NAS, we're going to select the remote option. You also have the ability to go to some popular cloud storage uh, locations as well, like Amazon S3 and Microsoft Azure too, if you wanted to do something uh, different. But we're going to just do a remote Synology NAS connection here. So I'm going to click on Next. And my destination drive is on my network currently. And what's nice about this is that it will uh, go out and look on my network to see if there are any Synology drives that it can find. And if it does, it'll uh, give me a list. So we're going to wait for this to finish doing its survey of my local network. And I'm going to send my data over to a DS216 Plus that's in another portion of the house here. So I'm going to select that one. And then I'm going to enable transfer encryptions because when we switch over to the internet, I want to make sure that my data is going out encrypted. So I'm uh, protected there. I'm going to type in my uh, username and password to that device. And now what will happen here is it'll uh, go back out and ask me what folder I want to put it in. Now, before I started the video, I set up a special folder on that other device called backups. And that's just more of an organizational thing. So I can kind of keep all my backups in one spot on the destination NAS. So I'm going to select backups. And I'm going to uh, then uh, just give the name of the uh, directory here. So I'll just call this work stuff. All right, so now I have everything set up to go. I'm going to click on next here. And when I do that, it's going to ask me what I want to back up. So I've got uh, work stuff here, which is where all the data is that I want to have protected on this device backed up. So I'm going to uh, just select that entire folder. But what I could do is go into that shared directory and choose what I want or don't want. So for example, if I don't want this temporary directory backed up, I can just uncheck that. That. Uh, so you can't go down to the file level, but you can go down to the folder level. Uh, so that might be a helpful thing if you want to uh, limit what you back up to the other device. I'm going to click on Next again, and now I have the option here to back up my cloud application.
notations also. So you saw in our last video, we looked at note station and spreadsheet. Uh, so I have some stuff in there that I want to keep safe. So I'm going to select all of those also, and I'm going to click next again. And now I've got a couple more options here and uh, there's a task notification thing. So every time the backup fires off and we're going to have it run right now daily at 3 a.m., it'll just give me a notification up here in the corner to let me know that the backup uh, was completed successfully. This is a nice thing so you get some peace of mind to know that your data was backed up safely. If something failed, it would tell you uh, also. So you do have the ability to figure out if everything is working the way it should. Uh, we can also compress the backup data to save uh, space on the other device. This is also pretty helpful when uh, you are backing up over the internet because you're able to uh, not send as much data. You're going to pre-compress it before it goes out over the network there. So that might help speed things up a little bit. Uh, you can also set up client-side encryption so that if people have access to that drive on the other end and you want to prevent them from accidentally stumbling across something, you can also encrypt the data as it's stored on the other end. And then, of course, you've got your schedule here. You can go daily. Uh, you can also do weekend or weekdays and set up uh, specific and more granular schedules if you want to do something like that. This is a neat new feature called backup rotation. And what this does is it uh, will keep an incremental copy of your backup. So uh, right now it's set to do 256 versions of backup. So basically I can go back to any day over the course of 256 days here, essentially. Uh, it's going to keep the last 256 backups. However, it doesn't back up 256 times. It only stores the differences that happened over the course of that. So if I have a file that changes every day, I'll have 256 versions of that file. But if I had something like a video that only changed the time that I created it, essentially, uh, that video will stay the same throughout. So it's not going to duplicate itself on the destination drive. This is very helpful, especially if you have documents that change often. Uh, there's also a smart recycle option, which will uh, give you more frequent incremental backups earlier in its life cycle and then uh, give you a broader one spaced apart here for older stuff. So this is really just a matter of how much space you want to uh, have running on the other side of the backup equation there. But uh, helpful to have that option, especially if you want to have some incremental backups of your data as you are creating and editing it. We're going to click Apply here, and that is now going to uh, get the backup set up on the other end. And uh, once that is done, it's going to give us the option to backup now, which we're going to do. And what this is going to do now is take uh, several hundred megabytes and push them over my local network over to the other device. And this will be a lot faster doing it locally than it would be over the internet. So that's why you want to get this set up in your house or your home office or network at your regular office first, get everything backed up, and then move the drive. So we're going to let this do its thing. Shouldn't take too long. And when it's done, we'll take that drive off site and do an incremental backup to it. All right, our backup is successful, and you can tell by the big check mark here. You got one here and here, and your notifications will also tell you every time it backs up successfully as well. Uh, the next schedule of backup is ready to go tonight at 3 a.m., and it'll do that every day until we turn off this task. Now, you can also add additional backup tasks here as well. So I could back up to an external drive. I can send it to another uh, Synology NAS on my network or someplace else or do one of the cloud options here. Uh, you can pretty much have as many different backups as you want. So you could have certain files back up in one place versus another. You can back up everything to everywhere if you want. You really have a lot of flexibility and control as to uh, where you send your data to to make sure that it is always safe. Now what I've done is taken that destination drive offline and moved it off site uh, where it is now waiting for more data. And you have to go into your backup editing to uh, tell it where to go now. So what will happen here is if we had a bunch of different backups, they'd all be on the list here. Uh, what you want to do is select the uh, one that you wish to send off site, which is this one here. I'm going to click on my edit icon here. And uh, basically, you can reconfigure the entire backup again here. So if you added shared folders that you want to make sure get included in your backup, uh, you would edit that and add one of the folders to the list. Uh, you also have the ability to uh, change the applications that you're backing up. Basically, everything we set up before, uh, you can set up again on here, including the schedule and the, uh, the other thing here with the backup recycling too. Uh, but what we want to do now is change the target. So right now, it has been uh, directed to a local IP address on my network. Uh, this now has to go to an external IP address of our destination device, which is at the other location. And this is the one area that gets a little bit tricky because you have to set up a, a 
static IP internally for your destination device and then open up a port on your router to uh, direct that traffic to it. So the IP address you need to fill in up here is the external IP address. It'll also work with things like Dyn DNS, which are uh, dynamic DNS providers so that if your uh, destination address is always changing by your ISP, uh, you can set up a Dyn DNS account. They have clients built into the Synology NAS. So you just uh, point it at, for example, my test address here, and that will always find that drive. And you just have to open up port 6281 and point it at the static internal IP of your Synology device. Now, I'm assuming that you already know how to set up static IPs on your local network and how to open up ports on your router. If enough of you have some trouble with this, do leave me a comment down below. And in a future video, I'll walk through those steps because it is a bit time consuming. And I think a lot of people who buy these typically know uh, how to get those things set up. My recommendation actually is to use OpenVPN. In fact, you can run an OpenVPN on these Synology NAS devices so that you have a little bit more of a secure connection and you don't have to open up uh, those ports on your router. You just have to open up essentially an OpenVPN port, uh, which can be a little bit more secure. So that would be my suggestion is to have a VPN uh, kind of uh, handle this transaction here. But once we have uh, that address in there, I'm going to click OK. And then what I'm going to do is run another backup and we'll see how it works over the internet. Now, before we do our next backup, I am going to add a file to my local storage here because we want to see how that incremental backup works. So you can see in my uh, work stuff folder, I've got a bunch of stuff here. I'm going to add a new folder uh, called new folder, and I'm going to put a file in that new folder also. So we're going to click on that. Uh, what's cool about their interface here is I can grab a file off my computer desktop and just drag it into my web browser and it will uh, go ahead and uh, just copy that file in there. So I've got a Apple Pages file here called new file and now what I'm going to do is run that backup now and we're going to go to our new external address. So we'll let that uh, chew on that for a second. Now this is going to take as much time as it needs to depending on how fast your connection is. So if you have a uh, fast outbound connection and not a lot of data to back up to it, uh, it should go pretty quickly. And what it does first is it goes and backs up your uh, Synology applications and looks for any changes there. And then it'll go out to your Synology drive and look for changes on your drive. And that uh, process of looking for changed files will also take a little bit of time as well, which is why it's nice to kind of let this uh, run in the background in the evening so that uh, you don't have to really sit and babysit it. Just have it run overnight. You by the time you wake up, usually it's done and backed up successfully. So we're going to let this back up here to our uh, external device real quick. And once it is done, uh, we'll We'll go ahead and see if that shows up in our backup. All right, it finished pretty quickly. Actually, I just stopped recording and then it just finished. So we've got the notification here saying that the backup was successful. If I go into our backup explorer, it's going to connect uh, to that device. And uh, we can see now we have an additional backup and uh, the new folder is there. And inside that folder should be our file that we backed up. Now, what's cool is if I go down to our uh, arrow button here and go back uh, a backup here, that folder is gone because it didn't yet exist at the time of the other backup. So you can see how this works. It very quickly uh, did a backup here and allows us to look at the state of our NAS at different times based on each time it backed up. So uh, that file is here now. If I were to change that file, I could step back into different versions of that file. So basically anytime a new backup is made and it detected a new version of that file, I can step back and forth uh, to each backed up version of it. But again, it's not backing up the things that already backed up that didn't change. So this is a very efficient way to get your data uh, over the internet without having to send everything over every time. Now I want to show you what that data looks like on the other device. So I've connected to it remotely here and I'm going to uh, go and browse my uh, directory here. And you see we've got that backups folder along with the work stuff backup that we created. Uh, but you'll notice these files are really not accessible. There's just a bunch of configuration files and a lot of data chunks and all this other stuff because this is kind of a proprietary format that they've created. So uh, you really can't browse the uh, data the way you would expect to just by clicking through its folder structure. Uh, but what you can do is load up the Hyper Backup Vault app. And again, we're on the destination device, the device that received the backups. And what you'll see here when you load up that app uh, is all the backups that are uh, getting downloaded to it are showing up in this vault. So I can then go in and browse the files that way. So I've got the same application, that Backup Explorer that we had on the other device over here. And I can go through that, uh, those backups and pull out files. And if I wanted to, for example, to uh, copy this folder onto my local device here, I can just drag it 
uh, over to my home directory here, for example, and uh, copy it out. So there is ways to get at the files. It's just not as simple as a drag and drop kind of routine. Now what I want to do is show you how to restore data. If you ever have yourself in a situation where your NAS device does fail and you have to start over again, uh, this is how you'll bring the data back over. All right, so the restoration process is very similar to uh, the backup process, actually. You load up the Hyper Backup app, and down here at the bottom is an icon for restoration. So we'll click on Data here. Uh, and then we'll get uh, our existing backup that we had already paired with this device. But if you were starting from scratch, uh, you would just look for this option here to restore from existing repositories. We're going to select a remote Synology NAS. I do recommend bringing that drive that you were backing up to over the internet, bring it back over so that you can very quickly get all that data back uh, over your to, to your device. It would work over the internet. It's just going to be a lot slower. So I would bring it back home, uh, get it connected, and uh, get it on your local networks. So what we'll do now is just uh, browse the network like we did before. It's going to go out and pull our existing devices here. So we have our uh, target device now back on my local network here. It's going to find that. Uh, hopefully, there we go. And again, you could type in an external IP or one of those dynamic DNS addresses if you'd rather do that. Uh, you can also set the, uh, the encryption on if you want like we did before. And we'll click on Next here. And then it'll guide us through the process of putting the data back uh, onto our device here. So it's going to find the, the backups on there. We only have one in this case, the Work Stuff folder. I will click Next. And then what it's going to do is ask me if I want to restore the system configuration also. Uh, so you can pretty much not only back up, restore your data, but bring back all the settings and users and everything else that you had on the original setup back over. So you just click Next again, uh, drop those files back on. After the files are done being transferred, you are back to where you were before. So uh, pretty quick and easy, actually, to be able to back up, uh, get it set up, take that drive off site, and then have a really nice external backup. And if uh, you know, hopefully nothing ever happens to your home or office, but if it does, you've got that data safe somewhere else, bring it back over, do the restoration, and you are back to normal. So that will do it for our series on the new DSM 6.0 operating system. Some really cool stuff, some great backup functionality that you just saw here, along with some of the cloud applications that we saw in the second video, and of course the video station overview we did in the first video. I do want to thank Synology for their sponsorship of the channel. I'm a big fan of their products, and I was really glad to work with them on this. I hope you'll join me in thanking them uh, for their support of the channel, and we'll probably come back and do some more videos on this product, uh, sponsored or not, because I know a lot of you have interest in network attached storage devices, so uh, definitely leave me some uh, things that you'd like to see down in the comments below, and when we get some time, we'll explore some of those in future videos. This is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.